In February 2019, I repaired an Apple Watch Series 3 that I originally purchased for $70. It came with a smash screen that turned out to be very expensive to replace, costing me $227 at the time. I repaired it regardless and used it for several months before giving it to a family member who has used it up until recently. But it's back. Almost four years on and it's now dead. It started with the screen falling out of the frame, which is something I've seen before with another Apple Watch where the battery had expanded. They didn't seem to think the battery had expanded, so I advised them on how to stick the screen back into place. However, by the time the glue had arrived and the screen was stuck back on the watch, it no longer turned on. Nothing is displayed on screen and there isn't any vibration or sound from the watch. On the charger, it's the same story, which makes me believe it could be a dead battery causing these issues. After all, if the display had been damaged, the watch should still vibrate or make some kind of noise when placed on the charger. From the looks of it, these bands haven't been taken off in years, because underneath it looks really gross. So let this be a reminder to take your watch off and clean it. I'll begin opening the watch by first placing it on a heat plate for several minutes to help loosen the adhesive. The screen is too small for a suction cup to grip and too recessed in the frame to be pried open using plastic picks. So I'll use a curved knife to pry between the frame and display. It's important not to insert the blade too far at the top or bottom as of the delicate flex cables. I'm only going to use the blade to create a gap. After doing so, I'll use plastic picks to free the remainder of the display. Once open, we get our initial look inside, and I don't see anything obvious that would be causing our issues. None of the display cables look damaged, and the OLED panel appears to be intact. So I'm still confident it's just the battery. It is yet to expand, so I don't believe it was the reason the screen fell off. But I will replace it and see if it brings our watch back to life. A replacement battery was only $9. Once the display is free, a battery replacement is a simple process. Just one tri-wing screw secures the battery's cable. Once detached, the battery can be pried free from the case using a spudger. While it takes a bit of finessing to come loose, it's nothing when compared to the adhesive that would be holding a smartphone battery in place. We can see the replacement isn't an original, which is good to see as Apple doesn't sell batteries for Apple Watches. If you end up with an original one, it means it's used or a knockoff battery. I'll loosely attach it so we can test out the watch. Pressing and holding the power button, we still get nothing on screen. So I'm going to plug it in just to see if that makes any difference. And well, it didn't. The amperage quickly dropped from around 450 milliamps to just 200. Taking the battery back out to measure its charge, you can see it reads 3.79 volts. This tells me it's fully charged. As for the old battery, well, it's stone dead. To me, that suggests there's an internal short because even a flat battery should output some voltage. To find it with none means the watch is draining every bit of power left. And that short would also be the reason the watch isn't powering on. We can dig inside the watch further to see if there could be a possible fix, but I'm not hopeful. I've never disassembled an Apple Watch further than the battery, so it'll be interesting to see what makes up Apple's smartwatch. The vibration motor, to which Apple named the Taptic Engine, connects with pins, making it one of the only replaceable components outside the display and battery. There's a lot of tiny screws and cables running about inside this tiny 33mm case, most of which are soldered directly onto the board. I'm going to attempt to remove everything without damage something easier said than done. Of course, this isn't something Apple intends a user to do. In fact, to my belief, it's not even something Apple does. At the bottom of the watch, we get a look at the hidden pins used to flash software. A special cable is required to do so, but was never released to the public. On the left of the watch, you'll find both the microphone and speaker, both of which will need to be pulled out from the frame. The digital crown is next. You can see a single button attached to the end, which handles the click function, but scrolling is captured using a sensor that sits below. The spindle of the crown has ridges that this sensor picks up and can tell how far and how fast you're scrolling. There's just a couple more pieces to remove before we can get the logic board out. It took a lot of time to get this free. 
It was loose, but just wouldn't come all the way out. However, I found my tweezers to be the answer I needed. At last, the logic board was free. In contrast, a Galaxy Watch I successfully repaired recently came apart with four screws. After detaching a few flex cables, the whole motherboard came out, proving a smartwatch can be designed in a way that simplifies repair. Removing the graphite tape covering the underneath side of the board, we can reveal the bare components. If you thought the screws in this watch were small, just have a look how tiny these components are. Nothing I can see has any visual indication of failure, like a burn mark or corrosion. And seeing just how small everything is, this isn't something that's going to be fixable. But we can admire the components on the board. The one with the Apple logo is the processor, the large chip next to it being the 8GB of storage, and a Wi-Fi chip up top. On the bright side, there's still a part of this watch we can salvage. The display still fetches a similar price to that of a few years ago. From independent repair sites to eBay, you're looking at over $100. However, I'll be listing this one for well less than the asking price on the Hugh Jeffrey store. Most of the other components inside are not only soldered in place, but have no real value. But if you have a dead Apple Watch with a good screen like I do, you can still get some money for it from people looking to get a replacement display. Smartwatches might do more than their traditional counterpart, but they won't be something you hand down to the next generation like real jewelry. If it doesn't break like this one did, its software will eventually become obsolete. I would have liked to keep this one going a little bit longer, but its sudden and random death isn't something I can fix. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the smartwatch playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.